viewers, welcome to our channel, welcome to Thermodynamics Lecture 3. And these are our today's topics, out of which the first one is isothermal process. An isothermal process is nothing but the process in which the temperature remains constant. And if a body is supposed to maintain the constant temperature, for that the body has to exchange the heat from the surrounding. Let us suppose I have a container, I have a container in which um, hot water is there. Let us suppose the container need to maintain the constant temperature, then, then uh, it has to extract some amount of heat energy from a source. Because if I keep a container of hot water in environment, it will continuously lose all of its heat to the surrounding or to the environment. So to maintain the constant temperature of let us suppose 35 degrees or 40 degrees Celsius, right? So to maintain that constant temperature, the container has to extract or the container has to get some amount of heat energy continuously from a source. So in this process, in this process, the temperature remains constant and if a body wants to maintain the constant temperature, then it need to, it has to exchange the heat from the surrounding. Exchanging the heat from the surrounding does not always mean extracting the heat, but it, it also means that supplying the heat energy to the environment also. Right, so this is the, this is the process where Temperature remains constant throughout the process from starting of the process up to the ending. Right, the temperature remains constant. Means the process takes place, the complete process takes place at a constant temperature only. Let us suppose the example for this. Let us suppose I have a pan in which there are some ice cubes. Let us suppose this one, there are some ice cubes in that. If I go on heating this, right, before I start heating, the temperature is 0 degree Celsius and, and until the last cube becomes water, the temperature is going to be the same at 0 degree Celsius only. So, throughout the melting process, the temperature remains constant. I mean, the initial temperature is equal to 0 degree Celsius and the final temperature also the 0 degree Celsius only. Temperature initially nothing but initially when I start heating and finally nothing but finally when it when it melts finally when the last ice cube melts right so in this process of melting the temperature remains constant right so you can write down the definition the isothermal process is a process in which the temperature remains constant and for this to happen. In this isothermal process, the heat exchanges takes place. Now we can move towards our next topic that is adiabatic process. The adiabatic process is a process in which the temperature does not remain constant. I mean whether the temperature goes on increasing or the temperature goes on decreasing. The temperature goes on increases as the system or body continuously gains the heat or the temperature goes on decreasing, yes, the temperature goes on decreases as the object or system continuously loses the heat. It is emitting out its heat energy. So this is a process where temperature does not remain constant. I mean, there is either increment or decrement in the temperature. Increment in temperature takes place only when there is absorption of heat. Yes, and decrement in temperature takes place when there is a loss of heat. Right. Yes, for the gaining of heat energy or losing of heat energy, yes, the wall should be uh, conducting walls. Yes, if this is a container in which hot water is present and uh, if this is completely closed, then these walls first of all absorbs the heat energy from the hot water and this heat energy is ultimately supplied to the surrounding. So these walls are conducting walls into which it is either gained or lost from the surrounding. Right. So this is the process in which the temperature does not remain constant. And remember one point, 
in this process, isothermal process, there is a contact between system and surrounding and in the next one, I mean in the adiabatic process, there is no contact in between the system and the surrounding this other than system everything comes under surrounding so this 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 and this all this outer region is treated as surrounding and this is uh, treated as a system the particular area or region under study or the particular area or region under consideration is called system so in the isochoric process the isochoric process is the process in which the volume remains constant. The volume remains constant. I mean, let's suppose this is a container and let's suppose this is its piston. Piston. This is movable piston in fact. Movable piston. I mean, I can hold this, I can hold this and uh, I can move it up and down. If I move it up, if I move it up, the volume increases, the available volume increases and if I move it down, right, the available volume decreases. So, in this way, I mean by moving this piston up and down, I can either increase or decrease the volume. So, the isochoric process is the process where we are neither moving it up nor moving it down, huh? me, the volume neither increases nor decreases. I mean, the volume remains constant, right? So, in this fourth one, isobaric process, the isobaric process is the process where the pressure remains constant. As I, have, as I already told you that this is a container with a movable piston. What happens here? If I move this piston downward, what happens? The available volume decreases, but the pressure between the gas molecules or the pressure between liquid molecules increases. As the volume goes on decreasing, the pressure goes on increasing. If you, if you move this piston downward, what happens? The fluid, I mean the gas or liquid available in the container, yes, get compressed as a result, as a result volume decreases and pressure between the molecules increases. So this is nothing but the isobaric process where the pressure remains constant, I mean I am neither moving it up nor moving down, I mean the pressure and volume. Now, the pressure and volume both remain constant and some systems are there where the volume is fixed but, but if you go on heat the system due to the absorption of heat energy the molecules may start moving fastly and they may exert more pressure on each other right this is a thing this is a thing where the volume remains constant but the pressure does not remain constant right so Try to understand the concept very clearly. There exist some systems where pressure and volume both are constant. And there exist some systems where volume is fixed but the pressure is not fixed. If you heat the system, the molecule absorbs the heat energy and they move faster and faster. So due to their high velocities, they may collide with each other or they may collide with the walls of the container. So due to which the pressure of the molecules in between them, the pressure increases. Right. So the fourth one is also over. Now reversible process. Here is a thing. Ice to water. If I leave some amount of heat energy to this ice, this will become water, right? And if I take same amount of heat energy from water, it will again turn into ice. So this is a reversible process. Explosion of bombs and explosion of firecrackers is the example for irreversible process, right? Uh, rising of moon and sun is the irreversible process. In fact, uh, coming of day and night is the irreversible process, right? Uh, so when it is rain, uh, it is irreversible process. So all, so all naturally occurring phenomena, all naturally occurring phenomena are the irreversible process only. They cannot be brought back to the initial stage, right? So dear students, as we are going through 
thermodynamics. So this is one of the most important concepts of thermodynamics. Modes of heat transfer. I mean the methods or procedures through which heat is transferred from one system to other system or from a system to surrounding. So there are three methods or three modes in which heat can be transferred from system to surrounding. Right. Right. So the first mode of heat transfer is conduction. The conduction is the mode of heat transfer in which the heat transfer takes place from one end of the object to the other end. Just like if you hold an iron rod in your hand and if you place it on fire, what happens the first end goes on heating itself or the first end uh, get, gets heated up, right? So after 2 minutes or 4 minutes or 5 minutes, you will see that the, the end on which you are holding uh, also becoming hot nothing but the heat energy is transferring getting transfer from that end to this end so this is the mode of heat transfer in which the heat energy transfers from first end to the second end right so in the second second one is convection see what happens in convection is let us suppose this is a container containing some water if you supply some amount of heat energy to this container the water in the container gets heated up and the air near the container also gets heated up right so as you heat up this water, this is heating up the air present near to the container, right? So, as air gets heated up, it becomes less denser, it becomes more and more lighter. Being more lighter, it will move to the upward regions, right? And here, cool air is present, which is more and more heavier, right? So, being more heavier, it will come down. So, the heat energy is now transferred from from this position to this position or from this point to this point through the actual moment of the particles. The heat transfer takes place through the actual moment of the particles. The particles takes the heat energy along with them and they move to the nearby positions. Right. So this is the method in which heat energy is transferred with the actual motion of particles and in fact huh, Gravity is also responsible or gravity also comes into play in this picture, right? So the last one is uh, The last one is uh, Radiation this is the last and third mode of Heat transfer in which heat energy is transferred with the help of electromagnetic radiations There is no involvement of particles in this Right, what we already know what an electromagnetic wave is in which electric field is present, magnetic field is present and uh, <coughs> uh, there are no actual involvement of particles. Right, so in this, in this the heat transfer takes place with the help of electromagnetic radiation. As an example of this, as an example of this, the heat energy coming from sun to earth is through electromagnetic radiation only or the transfer of heat energy from sun to earth takes place through this mode radiation because because as this is sun if this is earth in between sun and earth there exist some places where there are no particles complete vacuum is there so if there are no particles no heat energy is supposed to transfer but, but uh, the heat energy is transferred through electromagnetic radiations. So it is completely independent of particles. Right. So from sun to earth, the heat energy is transferred through electromagnetic radiations. And that process is called radiation. Right. Thank you.